You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. I'm Clint. Welcome back for another episode of Locked On Bulldogs here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We are in season. It's five days a week. We're here on the YouTube machine as well as audio. Daniel's here. That was confirmed. You know who's not here and not at his workstation? Who's that? M-Dubs. M-Dubs. M-Dubs out there looking for Betty Sue. He, He, He trying. He believes he has got a lead on her. Listeners, stay tuned. We are we hopefully we'll have Betty Sue on the pod by the end of the no, week. Not so. ho- not hopefully. No, no. I'm telling you right now, it's gonna be a train wreck. What but you know what? What what more of a train wreck could it be, Daniel? I was just That's about right. to say she'll fit right in. She'll fit right in. Uh hey, if you found us on the podcast, it's because you're a UGA fan. Um, we've gotten some love from some of y'all's significant others who uh oh. Gurf, I think, said uh mm-hmm. That his wife it came in. Sounds weird to, when you say it that way. Yeah, doesn't it, it does. Doesn't it? <laughs> Gurf's now trying to fight you. Just Gurf is is actively <laughs> fighting me. Yeah. Um, just throwing his towel at your feet at the gym. That's what he's. That's what he's doing. Just <laughs> if there was a more power player move than throwing mm-hmm. a, your towel, your used, your dirty used towel, sweat you. towel at someone's feet. That's. I mean, that's biological warfare right now with COVID <laughs> flying around, y'all. It, it, it it is. How did we get onto this? Um, hey, if you're new to the podcast, glad you're here. You found us. We are fans just like you. We talk like UGA fans. We're not gurus or experts by any stretch of the imagination. And praise God that is the case because we talk like fans like you do at a tailgate or at your home or over whatever machining of social networking you choose. Uh, that's what we talk like. We want your fandom to increase as ours increases as well. That's right. For fans, by fans. That's why we started the podcast and it's why we still do the podcast. The goal is for us to sound just like you and your buddies would sound if you were talking about Georgia football. And apparently, at least in some capacity, in some ways, we are succeeding. Preaching to an audience of one sometimes. But um, no, really do appreciate all of you who are listening to the show. If you're new to the show, if you found us in the middle of the season, this historic season for the University Mm. of Georgia as it's shaping up to be. Uh, welcome. Glad you're here. Glad you're along for the ride. Um, as Clint said, a couple ways you can find us if you're listening to this in audio form right now. We are wherever podcasts can be found. So you can go on to Spotify or, or the Google Play Store or um, the iTunes, uh, Apple Music, uh, Apple Podcast uh, Store, and you can download the show. In any of those places, we would appreciate a subscription. We'd appreciate a rating and a review. If you like the show, all those things are helpful. And all those things are great ways to support the podcast. You can also cruise on over to the YouTube channel, uh, subscribe over there. Even if you don't think you, even if you don't watch the show over there every day, if you if you just click subscribe, if you're if you're a listener of the show, it helps us out a bunch. Helps new people find us. Leave us a comment. Leave us a thumbs up over there. Just as we get the channel going, those types of things are really helpful. Um, but mostly, we would love to interact with you. Love to correspond with you. Send us an email: lockdownbulldogs at gmail.com. Or hit us up on Twitter at Dogs Podcast. Okay, Clint. Yes, sir. South Carolina game is in the rear view. Yes, um, sir. We learned some things from that game. We mentioned them at the end of the podcast. Yeah. Uh, not from that game, but from last week of college football. We learned some things. Um, the biggest of which being it's Georgia and everybody else in college football this year. If not now, when? Fight a brick wall if you disagree with that. I'm not interested in your opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, so now we move ahead and we begin to look uh, not only at Vanderbilt, this this week's upcoming opponent, we begin to look at this team as we are now approaching the one-quarter mark of the season. Um, where are we as a team? Kirby spoke with the media a couple times. Uh, he had some thoughts to share. He was asked – some decent questions and he was asked some absolute just bang your head against the wall (laughs) questions as he always is Mm. big picture takeaways from kirby's media availability uh anything that he said about the team or that you heard from anybody else jordan davis uh i believe christopher smith adam anderson uh, several other guys spoke to the media anything that you heard particularly strike you clint 
Uh, every single time that Kirby gets out on the presser, he's not talking about this week. He's doing a meta narrative for the whole program of UGA. Okay. So yeah. as he talks about, he's he's recruiting players in his, you're giving him free reign to recruit players in his press conference. He's not mad at you. In his mind, he's thinking, how do I parlay this to talk about how great UGA is? Mm -hmm. What we're the culture we're trying to set, I and mean, how do I talk to players right now through your questions? So that's what he does all the time. And I think what I learned again, um, Kirby is exactly that focused coach that we knew he was. Uh, he's doing the program things, the cultural things that we knew he was going to do. Uh, so there's nothing new that I learned there, it's just more affirmation of who Kirby is, who the program is. Um, I think the one thing uh, he did, if we're talking like scheme or vision uh the defense he let us know how they think about the defense dbs one of the concerns that we had getting burned right. on long throws uh he says yeah you gotta clean that up and his solution notice something he georgia fan get mm -hmm. used to this yep. his solution was not to change the coverage on the back end nope his solution is learn better technique and those won't happen just to be clear as well clint his solution was not yank the people that are currently in the game and replace them for the younger nope. players with more stars next to their names. That was not his solution either. Um, I, I think I learned that, um, which we, we said on the podcast, I don't know if it was, I think it was Monday. We were talking about the quarterback situation. And again, a lot of you still up in arms over the quarterback. I understand. I get, I get it. Uh, we disagree Do apparently you. on that, but um Kirby likes practice. Kirby cares about practice. And practice. I mean, who was it today? I think it's Dean Leggy, um, maybe the guy from Dog Post. He asked a question about like how do you how do you know when to play a young player, you oh, know, and yeah. get him reps and all this, whatever. And and Kirby said, Yeah, sometimes we do that in practice. Sometimes in the you know, in the late stages of the game, we'll try to get a guy in, get him reps. And then he said, But wait, just to be clear, we always play the people who are the best before we play the players who need the development. You you play the first best player. That's what we said earlier in the week. And then, and then Clint, when the first best player comes out, uh, you go ahead and play the second best player. Okay, good. And then when the when the second best player comes out, you go ahead and play the third best player. And so when Carson Beck gets all the first team snaps in practice, we're talking about Allen Iverson's mm -hmm. time. When he gets all the first team snaps in practice, maybe one of two things is happening. One, maybe they are trying to develop him in practice. But then when the game time comes, you see who the coaching staff clearly knows gives us the second best chance to win. And so he's the guy that's going to get the next reps. Or, and some of y'all, again, don't want to acknowledge this scenario even exists, but or something happened during that week of first team reps that Carson Beck was getting that made the coaching staff go, oh. This might not be the guy. That's exactly and, right. And again, you will never know that because you're not in, in practice. The gurus and insiders that you listen to will never know that because they are not at practice. Mm. Um, it's the almost sources, like the sources, the text, the gurus and insiders will never know that because they are not coaches on the team, even if uh, they are at practice. See, here we go. It's almost, I was going to say, it's almost like the coaches are mm. coaching oh. the team. Oh, what? No, that's the fans' job. No, it's the fans' job mm. to coach the team. It's the mm. coach's job to run out of the tunnel and stand on the sidelines and sprint in a know. dead heat for sixty yards and then pass out after touching your rocks publicly. Is that <laughs> no? After you randomly like pat a cheerleader on the back, like just did you see the end of that? <laughs> yes, you're right. You're right. He was in a dead sprint for forty yards. I mean, just looked like. The he looked like the dad at the beach whose umbrella was rolling down, you know, just like rolling down the and he's just he's gonna go get that. He's going to get he spent $49.99 on that umbrella and he ain't about to let it blow out into the Atlantic Ocean. No, sir. -y. Um how you doing, Dabo? T's and P's to the Clemson football program. You had a great yeah, run. You did had a great run. Back to being Clemson, it seems. So um yeah, we Kirby spoke. Kirby had some things to say. It was great to hear from Jordan Davis. I love that when Jordan Davis gets Anytime on the he first, talks. Thing, first 
first thing he does reach down to the camera and just tilt it upwards <laughs> a little bit just to, you got that you got that fish eye I, somewhere he's like my eyes are up here guys my eyes are don't just raise your level i'm up here <laughs> um uh, all right we got more to talk about we're going to talk about some notable players uh that we haven't seen this season clint that speaking of practice they out there running around. Mm. That is very good news for Georgia. And uh, then we're going to start uh, getting into Vandy a little bit. But first, I want to tell you about the fine folks over at betonline.ag. They are your online sportsbook experts, and they are the place to go to place all of your wagers online. Betonline.ag has everything you need for college football, for the NFL, for Major League Baseball as we gear up for a playoff run. Everything that you need to place uh, bets against the spread, money lines, parlays, prop bets, uh, over-unders, anything that you care to wager on, they have it. Uh, whether it is golf or cricket or rugby or any normal sport, you can bet on it at betonline.ag. Your online sportsbook experts. And right now when you go there and you enter the promo code Locked On, you're going to get a 100% bonus on your initial deposit. That's betonline.ag. Enter the promo code locked on for a 100% bonus on your initial deposit. Okay, Clint. So who's back? Who's back? Tell me, uh, tell me who's back. Guess who's back. Ba- Hold uh, on. Are they back once more, or some may say they back are again? Back for a second time, again, okay. as some would say. You can yeah. get with this player being back, or you can get with um, Tyke Smith out there running around, mm. Clint. Um, heard he was dead. Amputee, Tyke Smith. It's good to see him back out there. I believe he has a peg leg. I believe he's running around out there on a peg leg. He's good. He may good, have good news. He now can captain a yacht. That <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny. Um, go. not great connotations for a yacht on the show if you're new no. to the show. Darnell Washington also out there. Um, oh, I didn't man. hear directly, but I do believe he had a hook for a hand. He did Correct. not have a peg leg, but he was he did receive he had a foot injury, but I do believe it somehow in fixing his foot, he accidentally got a hook. So you just named two hand. starters that are yep. back healthy that we haven't seen all year. And just and to the, be clear. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. The list ain't done. No, the list is not done. But just before we get to to more names on the list. Let me just ask you this, Clint. Before the Clemson okay. game, these guys go down with injury. Yep. And the world is on fire. Okay? We're done. We're toast. Who do we replace these guys with? I believe uh, Latavius Brini. Ooh. Ooh. And Brock Bowers. <laughs> now, so, Clint, this is going to be a tough one. So, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. How are they doing this year? Um, well, Latavius Brini has cemented himself as on par with Lewis Seen, Christopher Smith, and linebackers with tackling and coverage. Linebackers like Channing Tindall and Nicobe Dean, who are as sure-handed as possible. Sure. Okay. That's great. And what about Brock Bowers? He's the best offensive receiver we've had all year up to this point. Okay. So, um, now when, when Darnell and Tyke Smith come back, this is going to be my hard. understanding is Latavius Brini and Brock Bowers not allowed to play anymore. Is that how it goes? Is that, uh, is I, that how I it think, works? I think if I understand the logic of others, if I have somebody talented on the bench, he just stays there. He doesn't yeah. come out. He just stays there because this guy is out here and he's our guy. We're going to keep running or throwing him out there and see what hmm. happens, Florida fan. Sure. Um, no, oh, Kirby no. now has – more bullets in the chamber to do with okay. as he chooses. Todd Munkin now has more toys in the toy mm-hmm. chest that are mm-hmm. that are coming out to play, and they all going to play. Daniel, you ever play that game Contra? Um, oh. You get that you get that spreader gun. You know the S. You get that S gun. Mm-hmm. That's the money. That's the money gun mm-hmm. right there. Um, you know some guns you put. It's not just one bullet in the chamber. Mm-hmm. No, you just have. It just they just come out in waves. So you, that that's Darnell and Brock Bowers on the field together. These guys do not replace each other. These no. guys stand next to each other, complement each other. Mm, 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 mm. But who else do we get? Anybody else? Nobody else of note out there running around, Clint. I am told. If y'all don't think it, we used WWF connotations before 
on this mm -hmm. podcast. If right. this isn't <laughs> Ultimate Warrior just mm. screaming down in the tag team cage match, that's that's you when you hear this news. I'm I'm confused. <laughs> when I hear this news, I am just sprinting around the neighborhood. Jorge Pickens, George Pickens is now running routes with a knee brace on. You're We're not going to see him. You're doing the hacksaw Jim Duggan walk where he, you remember that where he just he's out there with the American flag and the two by four. I'm just grabbing other people. We're doing bushwhackers around. together. I'm saying you come with me. They're like, where are we going? I'm like, just you start marching. We are excited. Why? Oh, George gosh. Pickens is, is getting on the mix. We need um, to alienate people, listeners to the podcast. We're sorry. We know that you have no idea who we're talking about. Um, look. George Pickens is running mm -hmm. routes. I don't know when he's going to be healthy. You don't know when he's going to be healthy enough to play. Uh, no one knows. They have a target date. It's probably not going to be in the month of October. Just full disclosure. Well, what about that last weekend? Of I was just going to say, <laughs> I'm going to add a caveat onto that. What about that because, last weekend? Because the 30th October. is real close to November. I'm going to mm. tell you right now, he suits mm. out and comes out for Florida game. He, two things will happen. Two things will happen. I will lose all the money I have for two hour period as I bet it all. <laughs> it's gone for two and a half hours. Take it. Take it. Take more. The second thing that will happen is George Pickens will be thrown out of a game at in Jacksonville. Well, for let scoring. me tell you, the last weekend in November, he's going to be healthy by that game. And we know what happened the last time that he played Georgia Tech. It's not it's, – it's, well, not going to go great. We're all going to be playing on the field. We have more talent, more infusion, more coverage. People, we talked about coverage on the podcast a couple of days ago. We get a DB who's all American. We get a tight end who's coming back in an offense that utilizes tight ends. Are you? Yes, sir. Are you kidding me right now? This is yes, this sir. is insane. All right, let's um, let's come back. Let's talk about Vandy for a little bit. This week's opponent. Um, you know, we talked about UAB, so I guess the least we can do is talk about we have, this. We have to mention the quote right unquote there. conference opponent that we are playing this week. So we'll be right back uh, to tell you about the Vanderbilt Commodores right after Clint tells you about this. Uh, Daniel Prize Picks is a mm -hmm. fantastic organization. I don't know if you have gone over there yet. We both love. Oh, I've been over there. Betting, great, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, college football fanatics. Have you heard about Prize Picks? Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. We love this. We know you will as well. Price Picks is a leader in college sports and daily fantasy. Offers more college football props than anyone in the world. We love props. Uh, it offers any prop you can think of. Now, I'm going to tell you this right now, Price Picks. I, I get what you're saying, but I thought of some, I thought of some props. <laughs> we got we got some prop ideas for you, but they're yep. listening to us. Uh, all the users can deposit right now. Promo code locked on will receive 100% instant deposit with match up to 100 bucks. You put whatever amount up to 100, they're going to double that for you. You pick two to five players, play the over-under on their projections. You went up to 10 times on any entry. It's just you versus the projected numbers. They allow mixed sports entry, and it has an award-winning app on both the App Store and Google Play. can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. Prize Picks is safe and offers fast, fast withdrawals. Don't hesitate. Check out prizepicks.com. Go to the App Store. Download the app today. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. All right, Clint. Um, so, you want to talk about the fine folks over at Built Bar for us, Daniel? Oh yeah, that's what I was going to do. The, the Built Bar is the best tasting protein bar on planet Earth. You know this, and I know this. They've got amazing flavors. You know this, and I know this. They've got chocolate flavors. They've got caramel flavors. They've got fruit flavors. They've got um, birthday cake flavors. Mm. What if I told you, Clint? That they've now added a cookie dough flavor. Oh, I, I know because I know eaten I, them I, all I, no, already. I know, that, I know that you know. Um, listen, if if it sounds like this is too good to be true, this can't be a protein bar. It can't be high in protein. It can't be high in fiber. It certainly can't be low in sugar. It can't be keto approved. It can't be um, a, an acceptable pre workout, post workout meal replacement, uh, a healthy option for me. Uh, it's not. It's the candy bar. It's the protein bar, rather, that tastes like a candy bar. It's Built Bar. Right now, if you go to BuiltBar.com, enter the promo code LOCKEDON15, you're going to get 15% off your order. So you can order some of those cookie dough Built Bars, and they are exquisite. Or you can order any of the other uh, delicious flavors that they offer. 
uh, orange, uh, chocolate orange, raspberry, uh, birthday cake, caramel, chocolate brownie. They've got a million flavors, and they are all delicious. Go to BillBar.com right now. Enter the promo code LOCKEDON15, and you're going to get 15% off your order at BillBar.com. All right. The Commodores, the the doors, the the stupidest SEC program ever allowed to exist. They should we would I would happily replace them with Tulane back again in a heartbeat. Um well, I don't think absolutely you could find a program would. I wouldn't I wouldn't switch them out for, to be completely honest. Oh no, there's plenty of programs I would not switch Vanderbilt out for. Okay, I, I bet plenty, you're right. I bet you're right. But but the point is they're a joke to this conference. That being said, they went up and got a win on the road at Colorado yes. State week two they did. this year. Then they came home and they played Stanford. I don't know if you watched any of that game. I did actually watch a decent amount of the first half of that game. And they were very competitive in the they first were. half of that game. If you look at the final score, I think Stanford won 41 to 25 or something like that. And so the final score, it wouldn't look particularly close. Um, but Vandy held it together and they were decently competitive. In the game, yep. The main reason that they did so was the running back Raymond Davis. Um, this for the season, he had 44 carries, 221 yards, and then late in the second quarter of that game, he hurts the ankle or the leg, some sort of a leg mm -hmm. injury. He goes out of the game. He tries to come back in. He goes out again, and then the second half, he's standing on the sideline in a walking boot. And now the news is out that um, not probably. Definitely the best offensive weapon for Vanderbilt, Raymond Davis, is out, is in fact out for the season. And so the running game, which was the staple of their offense, and uh the primary they were really moving the ball against Stanford, who's a yeah. decent team on the ground. They were really moving the ball and having some success. Um, hit a couple of play actions. Uh now he's out. And the second half, things really fell apart for them. And so uh that's that's a big deal for vandy and then you turn to the quarterback uh ken uh, ken seals and um this guy's not good no he's no he came in i think the game that we were at last time the dogs came to nashville he got his first start uh it's got into the game it didn't go good then it's not and gonna it's, go great now it's not going good now against stanford he was 43 percent on his passes for 120 yards in the game, one touchdown, one interception. No, um, no, that can't be. It's not great, Clint. So you take the running game away, and then they've got other backs, but you take the starter out of the mix, it's Vanderbilt. Okay, so you're probably not going to have a in this kid, Davis. You take him out of the mix. The running game is the staple of the offense. You've got a quarterback who's not very good. It's not a great recipe for success against a defense like Georgia's. And Clint, what's the one thing on this defense that we worry about? What's the one thing that we think South Carolina might have exposed on uh, this Georgia team? They may have exposed the deep threat, Daniel, the deep ball, right. getting it on the outside, near the numbers, near the sideline. The run game, I got no problem. Bring anybody, bring Michigan down, bring Ohio State, I got no problem. But the deep ball. Now, Daniel, is uh, is Vanderbilt good in that regard? Our weak point are they? Can they exploit that? Um, no passes of more than twenty yards have been completed. By I'm Vanderbilt. sorry, at, at Stanford, they didn't complete a pass at Stanford for more than twenty yards. That is that is accurate. Not okay. a well, not yeah. a single one. Nineteen yards, longest catch of the game. Everything else, I think, under fifteen. In, in the game. So they're throwing a lot of underneath stuff. The quarterback, Stanford got pressure. I think they only had one sack, but they had a bunch of hurries. They had a bunch of knockdowns. Um, they had a bunch of quarterback hits. Quarterback dumping it off underneath. That's why you see something like 120 yards passing. But then you take into account that he's dumping it off underneath and he's only completing 43% of his passes, Clint. To the to the check. underneath stuff. <laughs> when you're hitting checkdowns at uh -huh. a rate of forty three percent, when it's the third option, this they call it the safety valve, mm -hmm. Daniel. Like it's the it's the safe throw. Uh huh. And you're hitting forty three percent. 
Look, it's not great. The more I get into these numbers for Vandy's offense, and they put, again, they put up 25 points against Stanford. So you look at that, and then they won the game against Colorado State. I can't remember how many they scored in the 20s again. You, you look at the numbers for Vanderbilt, and you might think, okay, well, this team might score against Georgia. This team might be a better offensive team than South Carolina was. And with Raymond Davis, they might have been a better offensive team than South Carolina was. But the fact of the matter is that what Vandy wants to do offensively, no mortal human being can do against this Georgia defense, and that's run the ball. What Vandy cannot do offensively mm -hmm. is the only thing that you can do to have success against this Georgia team. Now pretend like I'm not talking about Vanderbilt and pretend I'm talking about another SEC East team sure. who can only run the football but can't throw the football deep because they don't have a real quarterback, Clint. Who this is does anybody else, any other team it's, come it's to probably, mind? I mean, if I know anything about Stoops, that's how Stoops wants to coach over at Kentucky, Daniel. That's how <laughs> well, that's, that's funny not, you should say that. No, it's not no. the defensive minded head coach. It's what if I told you it was the offensive genius? Oh, the guy who can no. take any quarterback and have him have more touchdown throws than interceptions in a given year? Well. By the way, Vanderbilt won 24-21 Colorado State. The Colorado State team that the week prior lost to South Dakota Jackrabbits 42-23. to So. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Vanderbilt's not going to score a lot of points in this game. Clint, that's breaking news. Van Vanderbilt is not going to score a lot of points in this game. We're going to give you our official predictions tomorrow. Uh -huh. um, but just so you know, we got a couple locks I could tell you right now. There are a couple locks in this game. I'm right going now. double lock in this game. Two, two, two of them. The barrel's loaded. One might surprise you. So stay tuned. Come back tomorrow. Uh, we, we're giving out locks. We've got Georgia locks. We're going to give our official predictions on the game. And we're also going to give you locks from all the way around college football to make you money this weekend. Uh, so we will see you guys then have a great rest of your Wednesday and we'll see you tomorrow. See you.